refer to the PowerPoint from here now because we're about to build the Fibonacci sequence, which you can see here. So of course, all of this is, is available on this PowerPoint as well, but we're going to start here and then we're going to go off to things that are a little more game related in terms of strands. We're mainly going to be using them to, to work on our level, our forest level, so we can do things like cut paths through the trees and do stuff like that. So we're going to make this, and before we make this, what we have to really talk about is loops. And in Bifrost, there are three kinds of loops plus auto looping. Now, the third kind of loop isn't listed here because we don't not going to really need it, but I'll tell you about it really quickly. Auto looping will loop through a sequence of things. So in this in this example here, what you've got is you are you have an array coming in, and remember it's a little hat, so it's an array. If it's just a little box, it's not an array. So it looks like a little top hat. We have an array coming in of some numbers. Say, I don't know, we have a hundred values, they're all random, and we want to add one to each of them. So we can add one coming in here and it's going to auto loop through that array and add one to every value. And you can tell it's auto looping because you get these little, let's just zoom in a bit so we can see. So you can see here, it gets these little arrows and dots. That's telling me, the same on the output, that's telling me that this node is auto looping. And I can show you here, if I build a sequence array, a sequence array that is 10 long, starts at zero and steps one. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's an array. And we'll just put this, uh, I'll quickly make a cube. The cube is not relevant, but it's just there to get the output running. And I'm just going to output this. And if we have a look at our sequence, it's 10 long, starts at 0, ends at 9. Just like I said, and it's an array because these are hats. I want to add a number to that array, so I put, put this into an array and I'll make a new value node. And let's say that number is, ooh, I don't know, 3. Now if we output this, you can see that it's still 10 things long, but it starts at 3 and ends at 12, because the auto looping has picked up the array, looped through every single one of them and added 3 to it. That's how an auto loop works. The second type of loop is a for each loop. And this is the fastest one because, well, these two are pretty fast because they are multi-threaded, which means that they work in parallel. So you've got a sequence of things coming in, stuff is being done to them inside of there and a sequence of things coming out, which is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. To show you that here, I'll do exactly the same as this. So we'll take our sequence array and we'll make a for each, for each compound. For each, that's what your icon looks like. And we'll plug that in there. Now, the way a for each works, you have the max number of iterations, which means that it will stop after these iterations. No matter how many things are in this array, it will stop after this. Now there are 10 things in this array, There, are, that's 10 by default, that's fine. What we could do, if we wanted to make sure of that, is make a value node there. Remember I showed you guys make value node, uh, create value node, and plug it in there. So that way, let's put this three up out of the array. If I wanted to do this, say, 20 times, I just change that. This one's going to change, starts at 3, ends at 22, all good. And this one's going to change as well. Procedural, non-destructive, change one thing, ripples down to two different things. It's awesome. A couple of ways we could do this. We can, we know what our max iteration is. Our current index is where in the array we are. So right now, at the beginning of the array, that's zero. And then it does whatever it needs to do, comes back, and then it's one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, until it hits the max iterations. So we could go and get from array. So we're going to get each value from the array, like this. Okay, and then we're just going to do what we did before. We're going to add, we're going to add three. And pop that into the output. You can see this has got another little icon on it, which is telling me that it's the output of a loop and it's an array. You can also, of course, hover over that. It'll tell you what type it is. So let's plug this guy in. See what his output is. Exactly the same. So we've done exactly the same thing as the auto loop in the 4H. Size 20, minimum 3, maximum 22. Of course, I can change this back to 10. Size 10, minimum 3, maximum 12. Awesome. 
One more thing you can do here, you actually don't need this node if you're doing something this simple. What you can do, delete that, and we'll plug the sequence in here. See there's an error come up, we've lost all of our display because you come back out here, this is going to tell you that, hey, uh, I've got a different kind of array coming in because there's an array coming in and it's adding three to that array all the time. What I want to do is just right click on the sequence and say port iteration target. So that tells Bifrost to iterate on this port. It's the same as a get from array. So it's going to get the first one, add three to it, put it out, come back, get the second one, add three to it, put it out. And just to prove to you that I'm not lying, 10, 3, 12, all good. So those two are the fastest ones. We have another one, which is very, very useful and used for different things. And that's an iterate loop. Okay, it looks super similar to a for each loop. And I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to do that do it a different way. Once more, we want our maximum iterations, which is 10. So this is going to run 10 times no matter what you tell it to do inside. Okay. But instead of putting in the sequence array, I'm just going to put in a value. And that value is going to be zero. Okay. Which is fine. That's, that's just a zero value. If you come in here, what I'm going to do is every time it goes around the loop, I'm going to add one to that value. All right. So it comes in, it's zero, zero is coming in and it's adding one. So that's now one. Then it goes out, but then it's going to go back and do the second iteration of the loop. So it's going to go around the loop the second time. This is still zero. It hasn't changed. What we need to do is just making sure these are both the same port type. That's very important. What we need to do basically is to tell this loop to, hey, when you start a new run through the loop, when you go around again, new iteration, I want you to start with what you had last time. So what I'm going to do is hit this, go to port state, and go to, ah, they're all, let's just change that quickly. Input and output, that's, that's pretty easy to remember. I'm going to, I'm going to hit, you can hit either of them. I hit that, go to port state. And you see this little icon here, a little loop just here. That, what that tells me is that this input is going to use this output. So we'll run through it once more. Value comes in at zero. First time around the loop, it adds one to it and then it goes out. So this value is now one. For the second time around the loop, this will start at one, add one to it. This value is now two. It will keep doing that until it hits the max iterations. Okay, so we'll pop that out there and take a look. Now, this is different. This is not an array, this is just adding the numbers. So what we did here was a sum. It starts at zero, at zero and comes out as 10. But we want an array. So what we're going to do is we're still going to add one to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this array in as well, the sequence array. And again, I'm going to change this to a array float rather than an auto. And inside of here, I'm going to take this array I didn't actually want to bring the array in. This is just to give me an array port. We'll rename this and we'll call this empty array. Okay, so right now this is an empty array. It's an array of floats. There is nothing in it. Cool. We're going to take that empty array and we're going to go build array. Yeah. And all I'm going to do each time around the loop is add this result to this array. We'll pop that out there. Make sure that that is a array of floats. And again, we'll do the port state so that array coming out is being put into empty array coming in. Now let's see what that does. This one, it just added them up to 10. There were 10, it added them up, started at zero. So what happens if we plug this guy in? If we have plugged that guy in, everything breaks because that's not expecting an array. Take this dude, put him in here and Starting to get a bit crazy on our old watch points, so I'm going to just turn these guys off for a second, except that one. Let's see, look at this one. So there you go.
Now, shouldn't that start at, that starts at one and ends at 10, shouldn't that start at zero? Well, no, because it comes in, gets added, this is the first time around, and then goes out. So the first is one. To get it to, get it to start at zero, we're gonna to have to do some more complicated things, which will be coming up. But that's a real quick run through of the kind of loops. I did say I would tell you what the other one would be, and that's a do while loop. Do while loop looks an awful lot like an iterate in that I can put things into it, I can put those things out of it, and I can tell it that I want a port state. Okay? What do while have has that iterate doesn't is a looping condition. And essentially, this will loop until that condition is no longer true. So to give you an example, we have to set our max iterations just for safety, or this will loop forever. Pop that in there, and I'm going to take the current index to float. All right, and we'll just say up here, we'll say less than five. That can be our looping condition. So I've got this to a float and I'm going to need my input like we did before. Just making sure that it's a float. And I'm going to go and add one. Add one to it, output that, make sure it's set to float, and then hook up our port state between the two. So let's see what this gives us. I'm just gonna hide that watch point and show that one. So that's six. Even though there's 10 iterations in here, we've set the max iterations to 10, it's only giving us six things because it's only going to do it while this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is less than 5. And we started at 1. So that's just a real quick explanation of the kind of loops we have. Okay, play with them, get used to them. There are lots and lots of tutorials online. I would look at the uh, Maya Learning Channel and check out Ying Ying's explanation of loops where she goes through it a lot in a lot more detail than I do. And you might recognize some of the slides, but that's cool. This is just an exploration of loops, so we just don't need that anymore. And we can go on with our we can go on with our strands. How do you build a strand? So it's really really easy. So if I just go and say a value, okay, and that value is going to be a vector, like we learned about in lesson one. I'm going to make this vector minus two, and then I'm going to duplicate that, copy and paste, and this vector is going to be two. And then I've got construct strands like that. Need to make sure that's a fan in. Put that one in there and that one in there. And then let's have a look at it. Quick assign diagnostic material. Mathflow 3. Blue's nice. Uh, a little hard to see. Maybe if I, uh, if I change this to 0 0.5 this to 0 0.5 there you go so that is an absolutely and totally legal strand it starts at minus 2 0, 0 0.5 and ends at 2 0, 0 0.5 we've made a strand it's that simple so let's get a little more complicated and construct the golden spiral 